In order to get to the bottom of the matter, Jack and his team went to the casino's director of security. But when they hear that Sanchez and Aurora may have been killed, the director of security looks a bit surprised. Lucy hands them some pieces of paper with numbers on them and wonders what the numbers mean. The security chief doesn't see anything special about them. Lucy said the two numbers. The security chief denies knowing what they mean. Jack thinks Sanchez and Aurora are probably investigating a $600,000 gambling scam. The head of security said that the 6,500 they were talking about could be rigged slots or fixed hands. The 100,000 per hand was a pretty high stakes bet and made sure that their betting books were correct and that they hadn't found any tampering. Jack wonders what about your competitors. The head of security says he needs to ask if anyone knows what they're investigating so we can narrow it down. Jack handed out a slip of paper with names and asked him to see if anyone had opened a hotel under those names. Since the investigation would take some time and Jack and the others were friends of Sanchez and Aurora, the head of security gave them a presidential suite as a place to stay in the meantime. After everything was settled, Lucy went to the casino alone, ready to gamble for fun. The woman's look was so good that she won down scenes of games in a row. Jack was also shocked by Lucy's operation. But then the manager of the casino came up. He gave Lucy the tickets to the concert, apparently to invite Lucy to listen to the concert, but in fact is afraid that Lucy continued to play the casino lost too much. Of course Lucy knew what the other party was thinking, but for the sake of the head of security for them to open that big house, Lucy finally chose to leave the gambling tables. She and Jack took a walk down the street and talked about the past. Lucy said she had been looking for Jack when she first left the army, but had heard from his neighbors that Jack had gone on a trip and didn't know where he was. Lucy knew that she wouldn't be able to find Jack in a short time, so she found a job to support herself first, and waited until she had the chance to look for Jack later. But as she spoke, she began to grow serious. Lucy asked Jack what we were going to do about the two men who were following us. Jack was curious when she found out. Lucy said she found out right after she left the casino. She thought they were trying to rob her of her winnings. Jack thought the same thing, but then he saw the black car up ahead. He realized he'd been following them since before they got into town. He guessed that when they passed that car, a robber would come out of it. If we turn and run, those behind us will surely catch up with us. Lucy asked Jack about his plan. Jack said, we don't pass the car, just run and go over the fence. Jack then told Lucy to run quickly. Just as they finished speaking, the two of them rushed to the side of the fence and started to flip over it. The pursuers behind them also rushed up, and the killer came down from the car. After Jack and Lucy climbed over the fence, they found a place to hide. Lucy also picked up an iron bar from the ground in her hand. They planned to split up to deal with these people. Jack climbed up the pylon pylon to let them know where he was. When the killer climbed up, Jack suddenly grabbed the rope and launched an attack. Killer from the high place fell down hard. Jack rushed up to hit each other to punches, but the other party was a knife cut belly. This directly angered Jack. He easily defended himself against the killer's attack and then smashed his opponent's hand on the iron guardrail. Jack and the killer after a few fights successfully stabbed the other side. He then threw the killer down from the heights. The killer fell hard on the stone tiles and was dead. On the other side, Lucy also launched a surprise attack on a man. She swung her crowbar in such a way that the other man was unable to fight back. The other assassin opened fire. Lucy was quick and blocked the bullets with her opponent. At that moment, Jack suddenly rushed out and pounced on the killer. The two of them quickly wrestled together. Although Jack was injured in the fight, his remaining strength was enough to deal a fatal blow to his opponent. With a few simple elbow strikes, he sends his opponent backward. Killer tries to kick, but Jack breaks his leg alive. Jack then dragged the killer to the cement and slowly pressed his face into the wet cement. In a short time, the killer lost his breath. They were relieved. After solving the killer, Jack didn't find any card on the other guy's body, but only a set of car keys. So he decided to take a look at the other party's car. Soon Lucy found a file from the other party's car. All that information of their team members. Obviously the other party has done enough homework. At the same time, Jack found a mobile phone from the light barrier and dialed the most recent phone number. The boss on the other end of the line asked if the job was done. Jack said yes, but it's your man who's been taken care of. Mike was a bit shocked to hear that, but he quickly put on a calm face and said to Jack, you mess with the wrong person, you know you won't get away with it. But Jack could hear the fear in his voice. The man behind the curtain panicked and hung up the phone. Jack tried to trace the phone number, but Lucy said they used a disposable phone. Even the license plate is fake, there's nothing to prove their identity. I thought the trail was over, but Lucy found a car park pass from the car with the exact address and time. Before leaving, the two threw the bodies into the factory slurry pool to erase all traces of the men. 
When they got back, Jack started to treat his wounds. Behind him, Lucy was sitting on the bed, staring at Jack. At that moment, Lucy suddenly felt a burning pain coming from her body. It turned out that she was also injured in the battle, so she hurriedly came to Jack, let Jack help himself to deal with the wound, Jack in the treatment of wounds at the same time. Even towards the wound blew a breath, Lucy was puzzled by his behavior. Jack only said that using alcohol to treat the wound will be very painful. This is the method his mother gave him. At this time, they began to talk about ambiguous words. Then they started to look at each other, and I don't think I need to tell you the rest of the story. The next morning, two cars appeared in the snowy countryside at the same time. One of them hands the other a map and mentions $65 million in weapons frequently. Apparently, the two men seem to be plotting something. At the same time, Jack and the rest of the team are up in the hotel. While they were thinking about how to follow up the clues they got last night, there was a sharp knock on the door. It turned out to be the head of security who was looking for them because he had a very important piece of information. The head of security told them that the Atlantic City Police Department, which he had commissioned to investigate the incident, had found two bodies in upstate New York in the vicinity of where they had found Calvin dead. And from the decomposition of the bodies, they had been left there for some time. Jack took the file from the head of security and opened it to find that it contained photos of their lost teammates, Sanchez and Aurora. The successive murders of his teammates have finally angered the big guy. We can only predict how explosive the next episode will be. I'm Zero Sense Film. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.